Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cut, and I'm back. Today we're going to make some of these fun little fall fodder pieces, and this is just, I've only done one, just to try it and see how it would work out. So I'm using um, HelloFresh bags, but you can use any bag, or if you just have packing paper, whatever in the world. We're going to do scrap busting, that's kind of what this is going to be about, so... I have loads of scraps that can be used and gotten rid of. So how is everybody? I hope that you guys are doing fantastic. I want to say hugs and blessings to Betty Ann, Lou Ann, and Nikki. Thank you guys so much for following me, always being kind in your comments, and um, yeah, just being your awesome selves. I really appreciate that very, very much. And if you guys don't mind, if you do like my videos, please like, subscribe, um, give it a thumbs up, which is liking, sorry, <laughs> comment, all the things, because um, my channel is just getting killed by, uh, I think, you know, a lot of it is there's some really big channels out there that'll get like 6,000 views a day, and obviously I don't expect that, and that's not what I'm saying, but anything you can do to help it get in the algorithm would be fantastic. Any activity on a channel helps it so that YouTube will put it out there so more people can view it. I would really appreciate it. It's very difficult for, um, and I'm sure you've heard everybody talk about it, but crafters to compete with the whole algorithm machine thing because we just, we just don't tend to get as many views. I mean, like I said, there are some... <clears throat> Um, journalers and stuff that get like 6,000 views but um, it's pretty rare or more but most of us don't and so we just get kind of thrown by the wayside so I would just appreciate it that's all so I'm gonna put some of my little number page oh so what we're doing is collaging obviously I'm sure you can see that on this paper and I'm just putting down whatever strikes my fancy I've got um, this tea bag. I've got scraps of all kinds. So I think I'll put a piece of this down first. Oh my goodness, you little stinker. It wants to go there. <laughs> and I am going to do a lot of overlapping and stuff because I want uh, to make sure when I, these aren't very big and these are for my fall fodder stencils, which I'll show you in a minute, but um, they're not giant. So you want to use littler pieces because otherwise you're just going to get like one kind of paper in the whole view of the uh, stencil so just something to think about if you're using if you're going to use it like for journaling cards and things like that obviously you can use bigger pieces when you are collaging but if you're doing this kind of thing it's better to use smaller pieces is what I am saying. And I'm just using a couple different, I've got my scorched timber, I've got some rusty hinge. I'm just using whatever I feel like. I think it will add to it when I add the Stabilo All, which is what the black lining is, which is a water soluble pencil. So you can use any kind of watercolor pencil you want. Those just work well. And then you'll pick up some of those other colors too when it gets wet. So yeah, I hope everybody's well and recovering from the mayhem of the hurricanes. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, y'all. That is just incredible, scary. And so many people lost everything and many people lost their lives and it's just not right. It's just not right. I know natural disasters, a lot of times there's nothing you can do about it, but it's also the response after that has an effect, so. Anyhow, I hope you're all doing good. 
I've just got all different kinds of paper, <clears throat> which of course, any kind of textural thing is gonna, you know, make those look really cool. And even the digitals, when you, um, tear a little bit more off of this, when you get them wet, like this one right here, had the flowers and stuff and it all kind of went away up there and just blended together, which it does. We're all doing well here. It's a nice fall day here, sunny and nice. I'm in Idaho. I get asked that question all the time. I am in Idaho. I do love Idaho other than <laughs> the traffic where I'm at now is a complete nightmare. So I just try not to leave my house really. <laughs> It grew too fast and there is just no, <clears throat> just wasn't meant for as many people that are here now. But I know that's a problem in a lot of places. All right. Got just all kinds of whatever here. Some dictionary page. I do like that little bit of flowers there, and I really don't have a whole lot of other little flower scraps here, so that was from my grungy kit. This one, but these flowers are big, so you're probably not even going to really be able to tell that they're flowers, but I do like the colors on them. And this one's in my um, kids in costumes, I'm pretty sure. It's hard to remember because I did a lot of them right there together, and it all starts to get muddled in my brain. But if you really want to know, I can look it up and figure it out for you if that's something you're interested in. I think I'm gonna go smaller. I know I said smaller and then I'm making great big. Um, pieces. You could also do like strips, like if you have a bunch of strips, it would look cool to do these with a whole bunch of little strips of paper. Those would come out cool. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You could do so many cool things with it. It's all better. I didn't ink that one at all, but that's okay. It's got a nice patina to it at least. And it'll get some color on it somewhere along the line. So I've got these flowers too. These are also in my These are from the grungy kit too. Also, <laughs> words. <laughs> the flowers just look kind of neat on these pieces. I want something to go under that because it's um, you know, torn in a weird way. So we need to piece this tissue that came in some package, I don't know. And I'm not being picky at all because these are all gonna get all chopped up. So it doesn't really matter because you're only gonna see bits and pieces. So don't make yourself crazy thinking, should that piece go there or whatever? Um, because it's just gonna all get cut up. <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm gonna wrinkle it a bit because I do like it wrinkly. These are grungy, definitely grungy. I'll come over here.
definitely. The only thing with collage is I mow through the um, glue pages when I collage. I'll do it this straight. You do want them to stick down pretty good. Another piece of old leather. I'm going to put some scorched timber on that one. I just thought these would look cool. You could put them in a journal. I don't think I'm going to get another fall journal done, but um, <clears throat> they would look neat in a journal on a page or on a pocket or whatever. But they would also be cool for grading cards. So I think that's fun. Like if you want to make a Thanksgiving card or a Halloween card that wasn't screaming Halloween, you know, that kind of thing. Fall card of some kind. I can also use, I have these things, numbers and letters. Some of them I cut out of uh, magazines. These are from magazines, but they look kind of neat. Like you can see part of an N there. Just put those around somewhere. Oh, I forgot to ink those too. I'm doing great with this inking thing today. <clears throat> And I won't do, um, I might not do this whole page because we don't really need a whole page to make, like I just made this out of a little scrap piece that was on the side. I think, sorry, the grungier the better. I'm doing that, um, looking for stuff that's right in front of me thing. my poor daughter's sick again she had covid i don't know it's been about a month ago or so and woke up this morning was just all a mess and it's like oh my gosh if you have covid again because she was you know stuck in her house basically for 10 days and that about drove her nuts because I mean, we're kind of homebodies, but um, we also like to get things done. So <laughs> it just, yeah, it just wasn't good. And she mostly stayed in her room because she has two roommates. So she was trying not to get people sick. And yeah, anyways, that about did her in. But she took another COVID test. She doesn't have COVID. So that's good. I don't know if you can get it quick after you've had it or if it's like a once a year thing I, I have no clue I don't understand that sickness at all <laughs> but anyways she does not have it again so that's the good news she must just have some virus and my son's doing good just working and going to school I want to put, I have my little watercolor brush here and it has some Stabilo all in it so it's going to come with some black probably but I want a little rusty hinge and just kind of put some blobs of it on spots. So I just took my stamp pad, I'm sure you guys have seen this before, and rubbed it on this mylar but if you have one of those, uh, what do you call it, glass mats or something you can obviously just rub it on that. And you can also dip the piece into it. I mean, there's all ways of doing these things, as I'm sure you guys know. It's just kind of fun to play with the different colors of ink. It's 
especially if you're going grungy, which I love grungy. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, I understand, but I really, I like it. It's just, it's kind of a fun style in my opinion, because you can really do whatever in the world you want, and nobody can say it's wrong. It's just, I don't know, I enjoy it. But I, I know it's not everybody's thing. These textury papers are fun to add stuff to. Just to give it some color in different spots. And that bit of water in there just really kind of adds to it, I think. Okay, so I'm going to let that be. And I'll keep kind of adding to it. But if you want yours not to be grungy, then you could just, you know, do a, a regular collage. And I like this math problem on here. Um, and then cut out your shapes, you know. However you like it. You could add postage stamps would be fun. We'll just do a little more collage and then I'll move on to the stencil thing. Even these little bits, I think, would be fun. Let's ink that and add it on there. Because it's just going to add texture to it. Glue. Let's just put it on here. Hopefully it'll stick after I got that all wet. Sometimes. Music is always good. I'm using a lot of the rusty hinge because um, if I am doing gourds or pumpkins or things like that, I think it's fun to you know, have a little bit of that orangey color. Do another piece of it up higher. This one will do the darker color. I'm running out of room again on my glue page. Now, of course, you can do your whole page and then do the wet stuff or whatever. It's just I'm trying to get it maybe a little bit more dry. Give it a little drying time is what I'm saying before um, I start cutting them out since I'm doing a video. But if you're doing it at home, you could do all your collaging and then do the wet part and then, you know what I mean? That's normally how I would do it, but.
this way maybe. I'm not gonna worry about inking it. It's got lots of good patina to it. So yeah, this does take longer when you're doing lots of overlapping and you're um, using smaller pieces and all that, but I think these would be fun to make a card out of or something. This is that cicada wing paper. It's not as shiny as this, but definitely very similar use. Only problem is, is it's porous, so <laughs> your fingers will stick to the top of it. A lot. Some stripes. Stripes. This is also in the kids in costumes. Digital download. I think I'm going to do this. Put a piece up top here. Yeah, I think these would be very cute cards or, like I said, on a pocket as a tuck, especially that pumpkin. That would make a great tuck on a journal page. Okay, I'm going to stop there and we'll just... Uh, get some cut out so that we can start doing something else. You guys get the idea. I would collage the whole page, <laughs> but it's not really super necessary. So, cause you don't need a ton to make a few of these. Um, I might go ahead and put, let me put one of these on. It's fun to have just the bits here and there. Uh, it adds something and plus if you used bigger pieces like I ended up using some bigger pieces even though I said I wasn't and uh, If you add these little ones, then that'll help with breaking it all up a little bit for you Okay, then I turn it over um, where did I put my stencil? Yeesh. And then I have my fall fodder stencils they come to you more like this, all trimmed out. This one I just didn't trim out. But there's mushrooms and all kinds of stuff. So let's do a mushroom. And there's two sets. And I don't know where the other one is. There's two per set. I think these two are together, and then I think these two are together. But I'm not positive. But anyway, you get two stencils per set. It's just... I did, did these last year. It's hard to remember all the all the things, right? So then we just trace if we can. Oops. Helps if you are. This is why I trace on this side <laughs> because my hands are spastic. Oh, sorry. Some people get offended when I say that. I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about my own hands. But they are, so I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> they move of their own volition, so, which is literally what that means. Cut a leaf out, be fun. Let's do another, like a pumpkin again. Oh, how about one of these gourd kind of pumpkins? So, so you could make quite a few with this. And if you don't have this stencil, then just 
you know, cut some leaves out, cut some pumpkins out, whatever. You don't have to have it. It just, this makes it easy. That's all. Because sometimes just free handing is, you could tr go outside though, grab a couple leaves, just trace your leaves on the back. That would work. And pumpkins aren't too hard to cut out. But they're available in the shop if you want the stencils. Oh, and I keep getting questions about freebies and Etsy and just all kinds of things. So whenever I do a freebie, and I uh, everybody does it their own way because like some people put their freebies on Kofi. I just put them in the description box of the video and you just go in the description box, which if you are using a phone, um, at the right side, right under the video, there's a little gray arrow. Click on that. Or sometimes if you read uh, the first part of um, the video description, right next to it, there's it'll say more. So click on more, either way. And it'll drop down a description box that has all kinds of information in it, like about the video, any digitals I use will have links there. If there's a freebie, it'll say freebie. It's usually right at the top. Um, and you just click on it. I don't know what that one. Do a long, a tall, skinny one. Oh, is it gonna? Yeah, it can go out that way. Uh, yeah. So then you can just click on it and download it onto your computer or whatever. That's how I do freebies. But all crafters or creators, whether they're crafting or not, usually have stuff in their description box about the video. So it's nice to know about that because you can always go down there and check it out and you know, maybe find out where they bought something or if they have a shop or, you know, all kinds of stuff. It, all kinds of information is in there. So it's good to know where the description box is in anyway for all creators. And then again, if you can't, if you go to my shop and you can't find what I'm looking, what you're looking for, go to my description box. Usually I put the digitals that I'm using in whatever journal or piece of ephemera or whatever in the description box and it'll have a link. So if you just click on that link, it'll take you directly to my Etsy shop or someone else's Etsy shop. Um, and you can, it's wet, so it's not cutting right you can find things that way a little bit easier because sometimes it is crazy Etsy shops. I don't know. And they don't have the best search engine in the world either. So there's that part of our mushroom. But you can see, you're just getting little snippets of the paper. So the smaller the pieces, the better. I did that sort of upside down, but I guess it doesn't really matter. It's really just about the texture and the interest to the eye. Did I get this whole page upside down? Is that what I did? No. But yeah, just a little information there. Description boxes are fantastic because ah, I'm sticking to everything. There's lots of good information in description boxes for lots of different videos, not just mine. Okay. It, it's really good if you let these dry all the way. <laughs> but then you glue that together like that and you have a mushroom. And then you can stamp on them you can doodle some lines or whatever on them. Um, add other little bits, like if you want to add a postage stamp, it would look cool. 
can do the stabilo all. We kind of did that a little bit already, but. Oh, no, we didn't. We used the ink, huh? I'll show you the stabilo all pencil in a minute here. Okay, I'll cut out this gourd and then that'll be good for right now. And we'll do some other stuff to them. But definitely a good way to use up garbage and scraps. <laughs> you could just glue scraps to garbage or bags or packing paper all day and just have loads of fodder material. I kind of messed that up and made it wonky, but I think I'm just going to cut it out wonky because I like it. Yeah, I don't put the freebies in my Etsy shop because then they're not freebies. Because <laughs> you got charged something. So that's why I just put them in the description box. As far as I know, anyway, I'm not a guru on Etsy, I'll tell you taken me years to just get to where I'm at with that. I just don't have the patience for it, which is bad, but I don't. Okay, so for our little mushroom here, I'm trying to decide what I want to do in case you didn't notice. I'm gonna ink it. Ink and think, as Gail says. And thank you to anybody who's come over from Gail's channel. I've had a few people mention that they bought digitals um, because they saw Gail using them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. All right, I've got this piece of plastic that's just cross hatching, basically. Do some of that. Just like a stamp so you can use any stamp that you have with some kind of you know texture type design on it it's just fun fun stuff um oh stability all oh, that's what i wanted so this pencil it's called stabilo all and it's water soluble so when you use it and then put water on it it spreads all you know out which is just kind of fun for mark making. And then when you add water, and then you get that gray scale kind of thing happening, which is fun. And you can do as little or as much as you want to do. You can also get the water on there and then add some. But I like I like to add water after. But you could do something very similar with the ink, obviously. So you don't have to do that. It's just these are fun to play with. And I do like how you get the grayscale happening with the added water. And we'll glue our cap on our mushroom. We can get our art glitter glue working here. Ooh, it actually worked. Yay. And I like to glue them on a little crooked or like the tops tilting, but you can, of course, put them on straight. Yep. 
And we can put a number on it. I'm not gonna use the whole number because it's not very big. So there's that little mushroom. Okay, and let's do our gourd. I think it's a gourd, some or pumpkin. Dunno. It's fun. It's kind of already got this torn edge here. So take advantage of, you know, some of your paper edges if they're torn cool. This one already has some of the ink on there. That just Distress ink, distress oxide. But you could also, I have this green uh, alcohol ink marker. I wanted to add the other one I did, the pumpkin, I used my Posco marker and I didn't I wasn't crazy about it it's too um bright green so I kind of like this olivey green better and these are of course never perfect either those stems are always a little beat up and stuff but you could also do these you know bright happy kind of colors, um, bright fall colors, whatever. So if you're like, oh, I don't like all that darkness, then just do yours different. It's fine. I just want a grungy ones, so I, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so I am, let's do, we can even do just some white dots. That's my Posca. Ooh. It's still wet. All right, we'll let that dry. Oh, I know what it needs. I'm like, it still needs something. What is it? I want some speckles or something on it. There we go, and I got that white on my stamp. Okay, that's good. There it is, all oh, speckly. All right, and we'll do a leaf. This one's gonna not be very exciting probably because it's, <laughs> it's very thin, little leaf. Oh, that orange on there. I know you're not, we all see it a ton, but just give it some, some something else. You could also, this one would be cool to do the um, incense, you know, burn holes in it with the incense. That'd be another idea to do for the, the leaf. Now, normally I would just let those dry, but I'm, you know, kind of in a, in a bind with the video thing. That 
that one. All right, so I think, I think that's all we're gonna do today. All right, so you didn't get me to see me do the pumpkin, but I did it just like these. There's the pumpkin, the gourd, the leaves. Yeah, I think that'd be super cute on a card. So I'm just gonna take this for example. This isn't the best example, because I'd probably use like, um, what do you call it? Oh yeah, this one's all torn and stuff too, but uh, oh my gosh, why can't I think? stuff all over me craft paper <laughs> but see you could do like that and maybe a leaf or something and maybe another leaf if you made enough of them so yeah I think they would make cute little like a birthday card or a um, just any type of fall card and like I said, if you don't want to do them as grungy, don't do them however you like them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will chat again soon. Love you. Bye.